Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888 and today we're going to be doing another complete disassembly and cleanup video. Um, a lot of folks are asking us for more cleanup videos. They love the Martina Henry cleanup. Uh, I don't have a gun that's quite that goopy but this is a Sino-Soviet uh, SKS carbine that is it is not unissued uh, but it is in arsenal stored condition so it's got a lot of uh, grease down in all the little cracks and crevices uh, I'm sure all the springs are all gooped up with Cosmoline, so we are gonna, we're definitely going to be getting into some Cosmoline territory just like we did with the uh, Martini Henry. I'm going to show you guys some really handy little hacks on how to get an SKS taken apart and show you some of my experiences with them, and uh, we're going to get into it. A lot of folks have been asking me also, um, I wanted to kind of clarify something just in these gunsmithing videos. You know, we used to instruct, or I say we, I used to instruct over at SDI, uh, a great gunsmithing school, their online based gunsmithing school. Um, I've decided to, to take really more time to devote to making gunsmithing videos. We're going to try to make a really good effort to put out one or two of these videos a month. It, we're going to start out with at least one a month and we're going to try to start doing at least one reloading video every month as well. Um, I have gotten a lot of requests from you guys to get back to more of the reloading content and things like that and the gunsmithing content. So guys, we're, we're going to try to make a deliberate effort to get this content out for you guys. But if what we're doing is not enough, SDI is a great program. If you guys are interested, they are really good people and they'll get you pointed in the right direction. And who knows, maybe one day I'll go back to teaching over there. Uh, but for now, we're just going to stick to the videos. Let's uh, get this thing on the bench, break it down. And uh, guys, it's going to be a long video. If you watch the Martini Henry cleanup, you know these videos are kind of long. It's going to be a minute. So let's get this puppy apart, get her cleaned up. I'll show you some hacks along the way. Let's learn something. All right, guys, I'm going to get into this. We're just kind of going to go step by step here and get this SKS apart. Uh, I've already took the liberty of removing the sling. If, it, if the rifle has the sling on it, go ahead and take the sling off. That's pretty simple. All right, first thing, have the rifle up in this position. Go ahead and pop the magazine down. All right, it'll just kind of drop. And see, if I lift the gun up, it'll fall all the way forward. I like to just leave it like that so it just kind of hangs. Pull the ball all the way to the rear, visually inspect, magazine and chamber, everything's empty. The gun's unloaded. Start by taking this lever right here on the right side of the receiver, pulling it up to about this position and out, just like this, while leaving your thumb over the back of the receiver cover. Sometimes it can be under a bit of pressure. All right, remove it. Remove the guide rod and recoil spring assembly. You can see the curly end goes in the back of the bolt and the straight end sticks out of the back. Pull the bolt to its rearward uh, travel. Pick up on the carrier. Grab the bolt, take it out. You can see there's a good bit of Cosmoline. We'll strip the bolt. Uh, separately uh, here in a minute. Right now we're just getting the, the base uh, of the gun taken apart. Go ahead and turn the rifle over down on the sights like this. You can leave this open or you can whatever you want to do because you're going to see what we're going to do. Right now the rifle is in the fire position in terms of the safety. You want to make sure you've got yourself a rag or something laying around in a punch. Put the rifle on safe. This is very very important. If you don't learn anything else, put the rifle on safe to do this because if you don't, the group will not come out and you can either damage it, damage it or you can really hurt yourself doing this, okay? Grab the rag, pat, pad the punch a little bit because you've got to push really, really, really hard, okay? And be mindful of, of pushing down right here because you don't want to damage this little guy. If you can, you just get it out of the way or whatever, okay? Go ahead and just preemptively put the rifle down like this where you're pushing down on a solid surface, those two flats right there. Grab the punch, and there's a little little tit right here on the back side of the trigger guard. Go ahead and break out your Hercules mitts. Push in. That one actually wasn't that bad, but I like to pad it because it can, it can hurt your hands if you're not careful. So that's just something to, to keep in, to, in your mind. Lift the trigger group upward and out, kind of like this. We are going to be field stripping this trigger group a bit in a minute. Take the magazine assembly, lift up and out just like that. It just kind of lifts up and out. 
And there's a few things we could disassemble on this mag, but we're probably not going to worry about it because a lot of these little pins and stuff are kind of staked in place and you don't really want to have to mess with that unless you really, really have to, okay? Now, at this point, the rifle's already laying on its back. We are going to go ahead and lift the bayonet up and out to do that. Pull back like this and lift up. Go ahead and extend the bayonet for now, just like this. Put the rifle back in this configuration. Now, the stock should, without any undue force, lift right off, just like this, okay? We can see that the stock is in pretty good shape. There's no uh, cracks or splits or anything. Uh, we do have some cosmoline, not too much cosmoline, but definitely enough where we want to remove it. Uh, we'll get after that in a minute. Let's set the stock off to the side. Okay, uh, our receiver, at least from here back, is relatively about as stripped as we're going to try to, to mess with it. We are going to move uh, down the rifle. Let's go ahead and close the bayonet assembly back up. Now that we've got it out of the stock, let's push the cleaning rod out right down here. Just give it a little bit of a, you'll have to kind of pull on it a little bit to get it to clear. It can be a little bit of a, of a bear to do so. One way that, one hack that you can do is to grab a punch or grab the T-handle from the cleaning kit of the rifle, skewer the head of this, of this uh, rod and use it for leverage, lift up. <coughs> Yeah, this one actually got bent and pushed down. Now, where that rod is supposed to be is right here, okay? And that just holds it in place. Now, it somehow got overcame this, this groove and wound up back here. But if you have a hard time lifting, grab the T-handle or a punch, lift up. <clears throat> There's your cleaning rod, okay? Very easy. All right, so moving down. Okay, we're going to move on a little bit to the gas system and the rear sight. We are going to be pulling this sight out. There's a leaf under it. And if I'm not mistaken, I always get my sights mixed up. I know the Mauser sights just drift out by being pushed down and back. This one, I believe, physically has a pin in it. And I'll give that a little wrap here in a moment. If it moves, we're good. But if it doesn't, I'll know it's like a Mauser style. But I deal with so many of these tangent sights, I don't remember, but I'll figure it out. All right. Now, the manual says you can either grab a bullet tip, or in this case, a punch. You can see that there's a, a scratch mark on the side of the receiver. That's where this little guy pivots. It's essentially a leaf spring, more or less, or at least the way that it's designed. It's got some divots just kind of built into it that interact with the rear sight base to retain the gas tube. We're going to grab a punch, kind of lift up. Oh, that wasn't so bad. Now. This is the uppermost travel, but we actually need to go further than that because this wedge needs to overcam to this angle right here. That's along the top of the gas tube. So with uh, keeping the receiver in this position, which I normally would not do, but because I'm trying to show you guys, we're going to grab the punch and gently kind of, kind of pull up and out and just lift this guy up kind of like this, okay? And we want it out right there. Let's see if we can get it out. And you see you may have to just sort of play with the angle and get it out. Okay. Now be very very careful at this point. Once you've got your gas tube out, leave it alone. We'll get to that in a minute. The other thing you want to be very mindful of is there is a short stroke, uh, basically a short stroke piston that is captured with the spring by this as well. If I lift up on this too much more up into this angle, it's going to shoot out of there. So what you want to do, you can grab the rag or you can use your finger. I'm just going to grab the rag, put it right here. We're going to lift up and listen, you should hear it just sort of pop out of there. All right. Now, see why we want to clean this thing up? Look at all that gunk. That's not good. So what happens is when this, when this is a short stroke gas piston. So the way that this works is instead of a direct gas impingement, gases are exerted through the, the gas port and the gas block. They are driven against this gas piston, which in turn drives rearward 
bleeds off excess gas through these ports right here in the gas tube. It pushes rearward, pushes against this, this particular rod, which drives back at very fast velocities, pushes the bolt to the rear, and once the firing cycle is completed and everything, this is also retained with spring pressure, so it's immediately going to just pop in and out because it's under spring pressure. That spring pressure is in turn going to push the extended gas piston that is extended past the gas tube back into place. Very, very, very simple, very reliable, very, very, very rugged. It's impossible to kill an SKS, guys. All right, guys, we're going to remove this rear sight. Uh, this is not something you should really try to do unless there's some type of an issue, but so like in our case, we got a bunch of grease and stuff, and yeah, we could, we could clean around that if we wanted to, and that's, that's not really a big deal, but you know, since this is a disassembly video, we're going to show you how to get the rear sight out. It has to be compressed down and kind of to the rear, and we're going to try a little hack here with the vise uh, using just a quarter inch uh, extension, and we're going to use that to compress the rear sight in the front, it's, it's got like basically a little U that it's got to make. It's got to go like down like this, like, like that. So it pushes down and snaps into place. So it's not a pin that has to be driven out. It's just like a Mauser. All right. That so go, yeah, go ahead and close the vise. Now I've got an extra set of hands here. Go ahead. Keep Good. going. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. All right, hang on. A little more. Got it. All right. So what what just happened there is we compressed this leaf spring, which is very, very, very tough. As you guys can see there, we compressed this leaf spring. And once we get this cleaned up, you'll be able to see a little bit better how this is set up. but. Let's move back over here and we'll get this leaf spring out and we'll get the graduator off of the sight ladder. Let's do it. Okay, really easy there on the, uh, the sight graduations here. Just squeeze these two tabs in, pull it all the way off the front of the sight. But be careful because these little guys are under spring pressure and they've got, you know, kind of a whole works going on here. So make sure that you pay attention to how this whole thing is put together. All right, it's kind of it's kind of a little mouse trap, <laughs> so pay attention to that. All right, I'm going to set this off to the side. So, guys, this is what you're talking about. You know, there's five pieces to that little assembly, six total if you count the rear sight. So, there's six pieces. Do not lose this stuff. All right, both of them are the same. I think they'll go in either direction, but just be really mindful of that. All right, definitely don't want to play games there. Okay, now. To get this out, I'm going to clean this away so you can see. There's basically a little divot right there, and you're going to take a punch on that divot. You can see it kind of smushing out a little bit, and you're just going to give it a couple of gentle wraps forward, and it should just kind of push right out, just like on a Mauser. It's moving. We can grab some gunsmithing pliers. These are smooth so they don't mar. And we might even be able to just get up under it, just like this. Look at that, and lift it right out. All right, so that's easy on the rear uh, sight tangent. Uh, this uh, receiver is pretty dang well stripped. There's not anything else that we're gonna really wanna remove. We, we can go ahead and take the bayonet off because I'm sure there's a bunch of grease and goop up under here. Um, I'm not going to really strip the gun any further than this. All right, we're going to try to get this screw loose. First, we're going to take a scribe and clear all the gunk and oil out of the screw head. Uh, that's very important. You do not want to try to go turning on one of these screws when the screw head is full of all kind of slippery stuff. You do not want your, your blade slipping and scratching up the workpiece. Now, I know this is just a mill serp, but that also kind of goes uh, to account for other firearms. I mean, if you're working on somebody's fancy gun, you know what I mean? You don't, you don't want to uh, have an accident that is just caused from the screw head being full of crap. So we're going to clean some of this out, which we do have some dried grease in there. You know, especially when something hasn't moved in a while, we do not want to risk 
this blade slipping. This blade on this one is actually a little bit on the thin side. Now notice how right now when I turn it, see how it wobbles? We don't want that. We want the, the blade to fill up the head of the screw width-wise and depth-wise. Like We want it all to, to fill it up. So let me grab another one. We're going to step up one more size. Much better fit. Okay, so we don't want it slipping. I've never tried removing this on this particular gun. Now the rest of these are pinned, like your gas block, pinned. Bayonet lug, pinned. Front sight, pinned. We're, we're not going to try to remove any of this. All the other hardware is pinned in place. The front sight could be removed, but we're not going to worry about that because we're going to be ultrasonic in this thing anyway. We're going to let the uh, water do the work. Without further ado, we're just going to see if we can get this thing loose. There we go. You're about to see a ballistic knife <laughs> in a second. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can either just let the knife fly across the room, which I think is kind of fun as long as you got somewhere for it to land, or you can pad it somehow or brace it up against something. Um, what I'm going to do, another way you can do it, if you want, you can take a zip tie and you can actually run a zip tie around the front of this to the rear of the lug, get the screw out, and then maintain the pressure on the blade and cut the zip tie. Let's do that. Let me grab a zip tie. All right, let's zip tie this thing and see if it works. And this is just a safety thing. You can let it fly across the room if you want. Perfectly fine with me. As long as I'm not standing there. All right, so let's zip tie it. And let's go ahead and get the screw out. So we can get our bayonet off of there. The thing might be under so much pressure, it might even pop the tie for all we know. No idea. Might be kind of fun. <laughs> Alright, I think that screw's backed out. Uh, let's just grab these and just put a little bit of pressure there. Well, <laughs> well then, looks like this whole assembly uh, it didn't matter. Well, you know what? That's fine. It's out of there. Uh, chalk that one up for the bad guys. Well, good thing we had a perfectly good wall over there to stop it, but there you go. Looks like I didn't <laughs> pin it in the right place, but you know what? We're going to chalk that up as a win. We got it apart. Now, this assembly should just lift right off. So, uh, apparently, the screw <laughs> goes... Uh, through the blade and not through the, the base. So I feel like a dummy there. So basically what was happening there is this. <laughs> All right, so without the spring, you can see it was holding the blade and not the base. So keep that in mind. Guys, don't do what I did. All right, and if you do, make sure it's pointed at something cool so it slashes it. All right, this upper is uh, stripped. That's as far as we're going to go on this, and it's going to get a bath. Let's move on to some of the smaller components, and hopefully uh, without injury. All right, guys, we're going to get the trigger group apart. Don't let it intimidate you. We're not going to take every little bit of it apart, but I am going to show you some of the most crucial things to take apart to make sure that you've got all the oil and cosmoline and crap like that out of there. Uh, we're basically field stripping the trigger group, if you will. Um, there's a little window on the left side of the trigger group, and this is the sear, the sear disconnector. So this, this firearm uses a disconnector, and as the bolt travels over the top of it, it is actually recocking the hammer so it can set with the sear, but then it's also, as it rides forward, it's pushing the carrier, maybe the carrier that interacts with it when it's in battery. Either the carrier or the bolt itself pushes this down to a precise location, and the hammer cannot fall unless the bolt is safely closed. That makes uh, the SKS a really, really safe gun. Now, if I move this down to where it needs to be and I push the trigger bar forward, you can. it's probably very difficult to see. But in that little window, you can see when I push the, the trigger bar, the pull, when I squeeze the trigger and the trigger bar pushes forward, it's pushing the sear out of the way. So if I push it down about this far, maybe an eighth of an inch maybe, 
and make sure your finger is on the front of it. Don't do this. Don't do, you know, don't do the, uh, uh, put it here on the front. I'm going to let the hammer fall, but I'm going to push it down about an eighth of an inch, squeeze the trigger. Now the hammer should fall. Okay. One thing, you know, we'll probably do a, re a rehashed SKS trigger group, uh, trigger job video, but you can see that the hammer kind of starts to, to, to pivot forward a little bit, and that's not good. That's negative sear engagement, and that'll need to be fixed. But for just casual shooting, it's not a big deal. Anyway, drop the hammer. All right, now grab your vise, and be real careful on this because you don't, you don't have to hold it super tight, but put it about this angle right here. You don't want to do this because when you, when you squeeze the vise, you're going you're gonna to mess up your safety. So don't do that. Put the safety in the up position. Squeeze the whole unit and don't squeeze it there because you've got a pin there. We're going to get to that in a second. Put it in about this configuration right here. Guys, you don't have to squeeze it tight. What you want to do is kind of push back. You're compressing this spring and you're, you're, you're kicking these legs out of this groove. So just take, take a rag, grab, grab it, compress it towards you. And again, I'm doing this in an odd way because I normally wouldn't do it this way. All right, pull back and lift up, okay? You can see the spring is a real bear. We got a bunch of cosmoline and goop. You can see these two uh, legs right here. They basically, you just have to pull back and, and lift it back and out, okay? So that's your hammer and your strut. Don't try to take that pin out because it's, it's pressed in there pretty good. You're not going to get it out on that strut. On this part, don't mess with that pin, guys. Trust me. All right, while we have it here in this location, we're going to move it about right here where it's even with the top of the vise. Grab a punch. Drive this pin out. Now, guys, sometimes this can be hard to do. These pins, sometimes they're, they're super, super hard to move. Sometimes they're easy. But don't be afraid to hit it. It's okay. But make sure you support it in the vise. Guys, do not lay this trigger group down on the counter or even on a bench block and beat on this thing too hard because if these, you know, these two uh, areas on the, the trigger guard, if they get bent, you can bend them back, but you got to be really careful with it. So I found this to be pretty much the best method. We're going to start with kind of a bigger punch because I don't want to slip here. Let's just see if it'll move. Yeah, you can see it bending. And look, I, here's the thing that I want to make clear on this as well. This is not something you want to have to do. Unless, unless you have to, you don't want to take the sear out. Sometimes if these little legs here act like they want to bend, I'll show you how to fix that. It's actually kind of humorous the way you fix it. If it's acting like it wants to bend, it's okay. It's gonna, it may bend a little bit, don't panic, but you may have to try from the other direction, which I'm wrong-handed, so I'm gonna have to move over there to hit it. Or I'll tell you what, I'll just move the workpiece like this. Let me try hitting it from the other direction. <clears throat> See if that does any better. There we go. Not bad at all. It's not going to pose a problem. Now. Now what you can do, if I were you, see when this, when this punch pushes this pin out of here? Notice how that sear is now under a little bit of pressure. See, I can push it back and forth and it kind of compresses that spring. Be careful with that. What I would do is I would leave this pin in the side of the trigger group and do not remove it. Just go ahead and just leave that, that punch just hanging in there like that. Take it out of the vise. Just like this. Okay, 
there is your magazine catch and magazine spring. That's what this spring is what powers your magazine catch and keeps your magazine shut. And then this is your sear. Just grab a punch and go into this little groove right here, pull your sear out. All right, and you see this stuff is all caked in cosmoline. So um, let's have a look at some other stuff. I'm going to show you a couple of things on this uh, trigger group here. Um, some of these pins are pretty gnarly and they're very hard to get out and I would not move them unless you really, really, really need to. If something's broke, if you take it out or whatever, then I would. Now, this little guy right here, this piece, is in between. So you've got your disconnector bar, basically your safety sears. Let, let's just call this the safety disconnector, okay? If the bolt's not closed, this is not going to push down far enough to allow the trigger bar to come in contact with the sear and allow the hammer to fall, okay? This little guy is essentially just sort of offering some spring action, all right? If you drive this pin out, which I would not recommend it because you can see when you're looking at a lot of this stuff, you can kind of tell the difference between a pin that has been moved a time or two and a pin that ain't never been moved. And guys, if a pin doesn't look like it's ever been driven out, don't drive it out because unless something's wrong, like this little spring right here, you can probably get that little spring in and out without having to remove any of these parts. I would not do that if, if, if you don't have to. This pin right here, below this little doll's head, see how it's proud? Don't drive that out. Just don't do it because it, unless it's broke, don't worry about it. The rest of this, you can clean around it. You can use the ultrasonic. Uh, we're not going to pull this apart any further because there's not really a need. Uh, the water will get down in here and get all this out of here. If you do have to remove some of these parts, just be very, very careful. Again, supporting the trigger group like we did when we put that forward most pin out. Because we want a nice crisp trigger pull, we wanted to pull that sear and that whole assembly out to get all that goo out of there. So the ultrasonic's going to do the work. If you don't have an ultrasonic, get yourself a little turkey pan or something, some simple green and some hot water, and uh, get in there with a toothbrush and just scrub this thing really good and let that hot water do the work and just make sure you oil it back up and that'll probably be sufficient. But uh, I can pull this apart if you want me to, but I, I would really prefer not to because these pins are not really intended to be driven out. This is actually not a pin. This is both sides of this assembly right here. Once these pieces are out of the way, you get this guy out of the way, you just grab, you see how this is kind of proud? You just grab your little pair of uh, pliers and squeeze it in from each side and the little legs interact with this little hole here and that's all it is. In fact, I might even be able to take a punch and sort of just, see I'm putting a little bit of pressure against that. So that's how you remove those. Um, so that, that's my thought process on these. This is about as far as I break them down for cleaning and inspection. Here's another example of pins that you don't want to drive out on the SKS. See how they're kind of rounded over, almost like a rivet? There's a reason they did that because this stuff is not designed to be user serviceable and cleaned. It, you know, really, if one of these magazine bodies went bad in the field, that would likely just replace the whole thing. There is a spring under here, but it's super, super gnarly and super, super stiff, and I seriously doubt that you're ever going to wear that out. I've never seen one wear out. I mean, there's a lot of tension there, and this is just an M-Block 10 round. Clean around it, use water, dunk it. Uh, that's the best advice I have. I would not pull this apart. All right, guys, we're going to strip the bolt on this SKS. This is another area where I'm going to advise people to use a lot of caution. Do not pull this apart unless you have to. Um, the pin that holds your firing pin in place is not like the sturdiest pin. It's got a head on it that is relatively thin, and you want to be careful when you drive it out because of its size. Make sure that whatever block you're pushing it down into, that it's got room to clear. Because if you're driving this out, expecting it to fit through one of these little holes, and you go to hitting on it too hard, you might break it. Okay, so be careful with that. Put it over a uh, you know an area that's got enough size for it to go down into, and you're going to have to hit it pretty dang hard to get it out. Um, like that. Okay, that's what that pin looks like. And see, it's got a it's got a relatively small head on it, so you want to be really mindful. Don't take that pin out unless you have to, because it's it's not the the strong point on SKS. All right, firing pin. You can see cosmoline goop. See that firing pin channel? 
full of all kind of nasty stuff, okay, you definitely want to clean that. All right, extractor is going to be one of those things that's going to require a little bit of doing, but it's not that big of a deal. You should be able to push kind of down and in and sort of lift out. And let me see. Should be able to. Just like that. So I'll show that again. I, <laughs> I kind of flubbed that up a bit. See how um, it lifts out and in and interfaces? Okay, so push back and kind of lift up, and that's it. Don't let it fly across the room like I did. But you can see there's definitely some nasty under there. Uh, that bolt is stripped. Everything's good there. Uh, it's pretty much at this point. We just need to clean her up. Oh, wait, our gas tube. Forgot about that. Let's get the gas tube apart. Uh, let's move back over to the vise for that. All right, guys, I'm going to provide a little caveat here about these gas tubes. I've dealt with a whole bunch of them, and I've changed out a whole bunch of these, like where people want to drop the wooden ones and get like the, uh, the uh, Tapco uh, hand guards or whatever for these. I would strongly recommend not to remove this guard if you don't have to. I'm going to tell you why. It's not like an AK. If this were an AK, I could just chalk this up right here, squeeze it, twist it, and it would come right out. But it, we don't, we're not that lucky with the SKS. These little tabs right here hold the, the, the upper wood in place and won't allow it to pivot. So the way that the wood has to come off is directly off the back of the gas tube. Let's start out by getting our actual piston out of there, and it's literally like... Look at that, caked in with a bunch of grease and stuff. See all that grease? You would not want to fire this, this, this uh, rifle without cleaning all this stuff off, which we're going to do. Now, getting back to the gas tube. Yes, there's cosmoline on here, but we have to make a decision. All right? We can either clean around it, which is probably what we're going to do, or we can try to remove the handguard. I'm going to tell you why it's a pain in the butt to remove the handguard. When these hand guards are fitted onto the actual gas tube, there's a pin that is put in place. And the amount of meat that you've got here, you notice there's not a whole lot of space right there for that pin to skewer the bottom of the actual exit of the gas tube. This piece of metal is relatively thin, and you can see that when the Chinese put this gun together, they fitted right here. You can see this is after the bluing occurred. So the part was blued, installed on the gun and then it was fit right here it was fit right here and it was fit back here you can see that that's precisely fit to make sure that the length of the gas tube is appropriate so you don't get gas leakage and so everything works right well there is a pin it's very 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 difficult to see but there is a pin and because this has been dressed down it's extremely difficult to see super super difficult to see but you can barely see the outline of that pin. On one end, it's going to be a little bit fatter. On the other end, it's going to be a little bit skinnier. If you are going to try to drive this pin out, you want to drive from the skinny end over, I would strongly recommend do not drive this pin out unless, if, if the handguard is busted to pieces and there's no other way to salvage it but to remove this, then do it. But I would not recommend, because of how well these things are fitted, Clean around it. Do not try to remove this because if you damage this piece, it's expensive to replace and it's hard to find. And if you go to hitting on this thing the wrong way, you can bend these little ears here. See how these ears kind of hang over the edge of the gas tube? My recommendation would be to clean around it. And you're probably asking, how in the heck can I clean around it? If it's wood, what am I going to do? Well, what you can do is you can actually take yourself, again, like a little turkey tray or something like that, if there's a nice hot day and the sun is out and it's just shining like crazy and you got a like 100 degree day like we do, you know, down here in Georgia, take this thing out in the sun, lay it down just like this and let it sit for a couple of days. Make sure it doesn't rain. Let it sit and let all of the cosmoline bleed out of it. It'll melt and it'll just drip off of it, okay? That's my recommendation. Do not pull this guard off unless you absolutely have to because trust me, you are going to damage that pin and you're going to possibly damage uh, this assembly and you don't want to do that, especially 
Dare I say, this SKS, this particular one, is a little bit more collectible, so we want to preserve it as a collectible. Yes, we want to be able to shoot it, but we also want to make sure we don't damage it. So that's my advice. I've done, guys, I've done tons of these things with the TAPCO conversions, and trust me, even if you know what you're doing, you're going to damage it getting out of there. So just don't do it unless you have to. Let's move on. All right, guys, you didn't think you were getting off that easy, did you? Well... I happen to have an ultrasonic and I'm going to dang use it. All right, so we've got some goo and everything uh, down in the cracks and crevices that this ultrasonic is going to do a good job of getting off of there. On a serious note, we're going to let the water and the heat and the simple green do the work. And just because you don't have an ultrasonic, or if you don't, doesn't mean that you can't do the same. You can take all these parts that we're about to unceremoniously dunk in the drink here. Um, you can put them in a turkey tray with some good hot water. And it'll, it'll get all this stuff off of there just fine. Main thing that we're messing with here is just getting all the cosmoline and stuff um, off. So, trigger group, bolt, bayonet thingy that we shot across the room, hammer, strut, springs, all kind of random stuff. Carrier, <laughs> gas piston, that whole assembly recoil guide rod. Look at all that mess on it. We're going to let the ultrasonic just get all the stuff right off of here. So clean however you're going to clean, and then we're going to get back to it. While we're uh, waiting on this to do its thing, let's have a look at the stock. All right, guys, on this gas tube, all we did was just rotted it out. Uh, I didn't film that part, but clean the cosmoline off as best you can. Um, you can grab like a little scribe or a pick and just get in there, like right here, and just pull some of this cosmoline out like this. See, we even pulled a little bit more off after I cleaned it, but get in there and you can drag some of that out of there. It's not a big deal. Here's part of my theory too, uh, kind of getting back to like why you wouldn't remove this handguard. The cosmoline and preservatives were applied to this gun after this guard was in place anyway. So I, I highly doubt that anything is actually seeped up in there because it's such a tight fit. So again, that's my story. I'm sticking to it, but you can let this lay out in the sun if you want. Uh, we've cleaned it out. It's nice and clean. No pitting. So that's looking good. Uh, for the stock, we're basically just going to take some uh, shop towels here and just wipe all of the cosmoline off the stock as best we can here. Definitely do not want cosmoline down in this stock here. See all that? I mean, there's not much preservatives. Now sometimes when you're dealing with a gun that is just completely unissued, then you may run into a situation where, like we did on the Martini Henry, where you've got a ton of cosmoline and you still, you know, could sort of bake this stock if you wanted to. You know, just let it sit in the sun upside down and let all the cosmoline kind of drip out of it. Uh, if you want, you can certainly do that. Another thing you want to pay attention to on these, uh, on these rifles as well is when you're inspecting them for shooting purposes, kind of like we are here, we're also checking to make sure the stock is not damaged or anything. You want to make sure where this recoil lug is in the stock here, this metal lug that goes through. You want to make sure there's no splits or cracks or anything uh, goofy going on there with that lug. Um, the SKS is a good gun, but the stock point, the way that these things are milled out in the middle, they can get a little bit weak. I've seen them break right here and I've seen them split in this area. So just make sure there's no splits or cracks or anything weird going on, and just make an effort to get as much of the cosmoline removed as you possibly can. When you see I'm just kind of going and just wiping down the rifle. We're not gonna go stripping the stock, and on this particular one, because there's just not that much cosmoline, we don't really have to worry about running the, uh, running the, the cleaners like we did in the martini video because that martini stock was in definite need of some very very in-depth cleaning now if you got some gunny paste or some renaissance or howards um, go ahead you can you can add a little bit of wax to the stock if you want it really does not take much we're going to add just a bit of howards furniture wax uh, to the stock just to help kind of protect it a bit uh, this has beeswax in it, as well as uh, orange oil and some other preservatives, and that is just going to help keep our stock nice. And it'll also kind of help draw a little bit of this crud off of the stock. 
I mean, guys, this is a military rifle. It's got, you know, some character and stuff, and, and we don't want to, we don't want to mess with that. We just want to protect the wood and give it a, a little bit to go on here just to make sure we're good. The serial number on the stock uh, looks to uh, match the barreled action receiver and everything like that, so that's looking real nice. And once that kind of dries off a bit, we'll just take a dry cloth and go over that and just kind of buff it down. And that way we're not really, you know, we're not going a, 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 a stupid extent of running like an actual uh, uh, tongue oil or anything like that on the stock. We want the natural appearance of the stock. And we just want to add a little bit of that wax to help protect uh, the wood. You can actually see as it's drying, it's starting to just kind of smooth off into a nice sheen. Uh, we'll let this dry. Uh, buff it down with some clean cloths, and uh, the stock's pretty much good. I don't really see anything that would lead me to think uh, that the gun is not safe to shoot. You can take a scribe, kind of get down in those corners a little bit, see? A little bit of cosmoline there. Just like that. Same thing on the other side. A little cosmoline in there ain't going to kill you, but you know you want to try to get as much of that off as you can. So don't be afraid to just grab and, you know, you can get in these little screw heads too. And around the outside of the screw, that holds cosmoline, see that? Not that you're ever going to be taking that out, but it's nice to know that, you know, that it's there. On the other side, this little slotted pin here. Can wind up get you know catching cosmoline when they put the preservatives on there that's fine just get in there and kind of clean that up a little bit just like that you know there's all kind of little cracks and crevices where you can find cosmoline if you dig like this type of scribe the way it's shaped you know i like to just take the back of it and i can just kind of drag it through this channel and i'm basically feeling for cosmoline same thing where the bayonet extension is in the bottom of the stock just grab it drag See, pulled out a little cosmoline there. Just like that. Okay, so be a detective. I mean, that you're kind of a gun detective when you're doing this kind of stuff. You're going through and you're trying to find every little excuse you can to pull grime and cosmoline out of these little cracks and crevices. Remember, our uh, ultrasonic in there is working on getting the gun clean for us so we can take a little extra time on the stock to get every little bit out. See, there's some more. Same thing on the other side. Any little spot like that, that's a crack or a crevice, anything that can hold cosmoline, it will. Because when they dip these things, that cosmoline is still pretty, pretty soft. There you go, there's some. And it'll, it'll get in there in every little pore and crack and crevice that it possibly can. Not too bad. We've got good bit of the surface cosmoline off. And guys, this is not a dipped rifle by any stretch. Uh, if you guys want me to, I can pick up an unissued SKS somewhere, and we can do a complete like unissued SKS cleanup if you want. It's basically just like this video, except just a lot goopier. Basically, a longer trip in the ultrasonic. But there are some tips and tricks that I can share with you when it comes to getting all of this stuff off of here when you've got a really, really, really caked up gun. So see again, run along this channel, we're dragging Cosmoline out. So take a little time, get in there and just get all that out. I think you guys get the idea there. Just take your scribe and just, you know, you're not, you're not scraping the wood too bad. You're just gently going over it with the pick to get that Cosmoline off of there. We're gonna let our wax sit up and we'll wipe it down with a clean cloth and we're going to reassemble the gun. It's going to take a minute to reassemble the gun, but we'll lubricate it and get her back together. Let's do it. And there's some hacks on reassembly. So let's do it. All right, guys, we've gotten this gun cleaned up pretty well. Um, the ultrasonic took care of a lot of the cosmoline and a lot of the grime. Everything cleaned up really nice. We're going to get it back together. I am going to work relatively quick. So if you get stumped and you need to look at something again, refer back to it. But I'm going to work pretty much in real time and try to explain as I go. So we're just going to start with the trigger group since it's what I've got here. Grab your pliers, in with the sear. 
right there. Okay, that's good there. Got the sear in place. The magazine catch is going to go right back in there. And uh, you'll have to kind of play with it a little bit. Make sure that that uh, spring kind of sits right there in that groove. Go ahead and uh, compress this a bit. All right. Now, normally, I would say we'll use a vice hack and squeeze it. But we really want to be careful there. We don't want to compress those or squeeze them much. Um, let's try it. Let's see how that goes. Now, sometimes these pins will be kind of loose. Let's see if getting this cleaned up will allow us to... See, I'm just compressing this with my finger. Let's just see what happens. About right there. Yeah, see how it's starting to move? Uh, what I'd rather do... We might be able to get that started. Just like that. All right, let's see if it'll... Squeeze on in there. Actually, that, that gave just fine. Now what we can do that we've got the pin started, again, just like this. We'll support it right here without squeezing too tight. I'm going to show you a test that you can do to make sure that you uh, didn't bend the trigger guard. Uh, sometimes they will uh, kind of bend around a little bit. It's okay. I'll show you a fix for that. It's highly scientific. All right, this is a part where you want to make sure... See, you want the pin about right there. You want roughly about equal space on either end of the of the guard, okay? Because that's what's going to actually interface with the receiver to hold the guard in place. Now, another thing we're going to do a quick test is to grab the magazine catch. All right, see how that's that's trying to bind a little bit? That's okay. We did it did bend a little bit. I'm going to show you a little hack for that. Grab yourself a either a punch or a big screwdriver. And tell you what we'll do. We'll just use the uh, we're gonna use the padded part of this handle right here. We're gonna stick it in here. Watch this. Just do that. Trust me. That should now. Yeah move a lot more freely. Okay, that looks good. So now, again, putting the trigger group on safe, that's very important for this next part, we're going to reinstall the hammer strut. Remember, using care not to squeeze this part right here. You want to actually just bump the edge of the vise up against it about like that. Okay, real easy. We're going to take our hammer which has the strut attached along with the return spring, which by the way is extremely gnarly. You're gonna wanna start the, the tit of the strut into this little doll's head right here, and you're gonna compress it. You may have to rotate it just a bit to get it to start. Pull back, that's it. Okay, functions test. We can do it while the trigger is right here in the vise watch. I know, because I know where to put it, literally, we're going to just... I'm pushing this down about yay far. Let's see if we still got negative engagement. Yep, that hammer is dropping as the sear is being pushed. That is something that we're going to correct in a future video. But for now, there's our group. Remember, when we reinstall this, it needs to be on safe. Man, this cleaned up beautifully. Uh, for such an older firearm, she's in wonderful shape, perfectly serviceable, ready to use. Put the trigger group back on safe, set it to the side. We're going to move on to the next part. All right, guys, so to put the bayonet back on, we're going to go ahead and knock that out real quick. This is really how I should have done it to begin with, hindsight being what it was, although that was funny. You just see you've got the spring, the bayonet, and you want to chalk the bayonet up in the vise with the thickest spline of the bayonet on top because when it's in the collapsed or open position, see it's going to be in this configuration, which is going to have the spline up where it should be. When it closes, the, the skinnier part 
will line up perfectly with the bottom band here. So just uh, try to try to keep that in your mind here. We're just going to have this chalked up. We're going to compress it. I'll tell you what, I'm going to uh, I'm going to get a little bit of help here. Chad, why don't you just uh, hold this back for me? Don't let go. There you go. So get a helping hand if you need to. He's holding this back. All we have to do now is line up and go ahead and start our screw. Uh, there's only one way this screw can go in, so don't worry. You're not going to get it wrong. Let me grab my little Brownells magnet tip here, and we're just going to um, screw that on. So this is really how it should have been removed. We see how much easier this is. We're just going to tighten this down all the way. Okay, one let go. Okay, now to test, we're just going to lift up. There we go. So our, uh, our bayonet is back on. We're going to move on to the rear sight assembly and put that back together. All right, guys, getting this rear sight back together is going to frustrate you bigly. Um, we're going to get a little bit of grease here to hold these springs in place. There's some little detents right here, and we want to make sure that everything stays put because um, it's kind of a Chinese finger trap, <laughs> literally, to get back together. So we're just going to get a little bit of grease here. And yes, I did steal this vial of grease from a uh, Geisley. <laughs> Uh, trigger pack, so don't tell Mr. Uh, Geisley. Thanks for the grease, Bill. All right. And then, now, this whole situation fits uh, together. I want to say... No, oh, I had it right. These things go together like this. It's kind of a bit of a goes together like this okay now what's happening is <laughs> these springs are compressing and you see the little teeth on the inside that's what's actually grabbing this whole arrangement so you want to um, <laughs> grit your teeth hold your mouth right and we're gonna get this together very 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 carefully because we do not want this whole arrangement flying across the room. Boy, yeah. This is probably one of the hardest parts of getting this gun back together. Let me, uh, let me get this back into the rear sight. Also, something that we want to look at here on this rear sight is look at the wear patterns. Uh, a lot of people get this wrong or they get confused about it. See where that got dressed down right there? That, that section is going to go to the rear. All right, see where it's dressed down? They might have made some minor adjustment and dressed that down to make the gun hit a little bit more where they wanted. All right, so we're going to take these guys right here. We're just going to put this whole arrangement back together just like this. This is how it's going to go together, okay? See this? Hopefully you guys can see. It's, it's, it's hard to show. And we're just going to push the whole arrangement back together just like this. Do not release tension off of these. They're going to go flying all the way across the room. Squeeze them together and making sure the shiny side's towards the back. There you go. So the constant spring pressure. There you go. Rear sight's ready to go back in the gun. Uh, let's get the uh, action back over to the vise. And hopefully that demonstrated that good enough for you guys to show you. Okay, hopefully this arrangement will go back a lot easier than it came apart. And just like Mausers, they are a little bit harder to get apart than they are to get back together. Hopefully I'm going to demonstrate that. Take your leaf and just kind of drop it in. Well, without getting your glove caught in there, preferably. All right. Now, this is where I'm going to have to break out the He-Man and squeeze this whole arrangement down and maybe... Just maybe. Let me uh, grab a, a rag here. There's some sharp edges on this guy and we don't want to get cut. Should be able to just push and compress. We're going to push down, up and in, and it's going to pop back up with the power of the leaf spring. <clears throat> I 
Good grief, man. We may have to employ the vice trick again, because that is some gnarly, gnarly, gnarly. Actually, you know what? I think I can get there. Let me grab a brass punch here, and I'm just going to use that as a little, little helping hand to help compress this leaf spring from the front. I might be able to push it in there. I know it's hard to tell, but I'm just going to, look, I'm going to compress right here. I'm just, I'm going to do what I need to do to get it in, guys, but you see what I'm doing here. I'm using this to push and compress, and then I'm pushing with my right hand down and in. So let's see if I can get it. Just like that. All right, so we make sure everything works nice and clean. There we go. Rear sight ready to go. I'll tell you what, while we got it right here, we already got the camera running, we'll go ahead and get our, uh, our short stroke uh, return piston back in there. And uh, we'll go ahead and get the uh, upper handguard on too. So we've cleaned that to the best of our abilities without removing the wood like we mentioned. Gas tube back in there. It should move freely like that. And you can see the action that it provides when it goes rearward. Okay, so we've got that back together. Again, grabbing a punch. We're gonna pull this up. You have to go up pretty high. Push this whole arrangement back in here. And you're probably gonna need to grab, you can probably do it with your fingers, but I'm gonna grab a punch, compress it with a punch. Boy, that is some serious pressure on that thing. All right, lift up on that a bit. There you go, it's captured. Should be able to just leave it at the uppermost point of its travel. And in theory, the gas tube and piston up front, you want to just line it up in the front and just pivot down. Pop it in like that, grab your punch or bullet tip, and replace this guy here. Good to go. That's the rest of that. Let's move on to the bolt and get it back together. Okay, bolt reassembly, pretty easy. Pretty much just like it came apart. That bolt cleaned up really nice. It does have some wear, but it's in very, very good shape overall. Uh, this gun in general is in excellent condition, definitely safe to shoot, I have no doubt in my mind. So again, with the extractor, uh, rear, in first, compress it, Put your, hold your finger there so the spring doesn't bind up, push it in, snaps back in place, okay, real easy. Now this firing pin confuses a lot of people, uh, you know. There's a, there's a groove that is cut into the top of the firing pin that has to basically intercept the slot on this pin right here, kind of like this, okay? So if it's not in the proper position, you're not going to be able to get that pin back in. You do not want to jam this thing up and mess things up. So best thing to do is put the firing pin in with this little tit right here up in the up position. So if you have to, just lay the bolt right there for reference, push it in. And you can look through there and you can see when it lines up. And there is a flat on this pin that coincides with the top of that tri uh, firing pin. Sometimes they're going to be a little bit of a bear to get in there. All right, we'll see if that'll go now. Sometimes you can put them in with finger pressure. Sometimes you have to drive them in. You can clearly see the flat that coincides with the top of the firing pin. Firing pin should move back and forth freely. It should not stick. You do not want that firing pin sticking forward. The bolt's done. Let's go ahead and finish putting the gun together. That's pretty much uh, it for you know reassembly of uh, the components. Let's just finish putting her together. All right, guys, this is a part of the process where what I like to do before I, I finish assembly is just grab my, my random hodgepodge of tools and punches and things and just move them out of the way. When you're handling these work pieces, you don't want to, you know, have everything getting scratched up. Even though this is a mill cert, that's something to consider. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get the cleaning rod back in place. 
that's really easy. Run it in here. Pull down a little bit and it'll kind of just interface and click right in place. Just like that. All right, everything's good there. <clears throat> now, we'll extend the bayonet. <clears throat> Replace the stock. And we already did wipe it down, by the way. All right, put the stock back in place. Basically just pivots. It just pivots, see, like this. So go ahead and get the stock back on there. Close the bayonet. Okay, that'll help uh, sort of hold everything in place a little bit. All right, at this point, what we're gonna wanna do is turn the rifle on its back like this. Magazine, open, like this. It's just gonna sort of find its home like that. Leave it open, okay, just like this. Again, remember what I tell you before, make sure that the trigger group is on uh, safe because that will make this next process incredibly difficult. And also make sure that this pin is nice and centered. You don't want it over to one side or crooked. You wanna make sure that there's equal space on this pin sticking out on either side. Go in just like this at this angle and then push in just like this. Using smart pressure Press down, just like that. Leave the, leave the uh, rifle on safe. Flip it back over. Leave the magazine just hanging just like it is. You don't have to worry about that right now. Leave, leave it hanging, okay? Bolt mechanism. There's two little grooves right there that just everything fits together just like this. Place the carrier and bolt back into the receiver of the rifle Slight downward pressure and push forward. It's a nice fit, okay? All right, best way to think about the recoil guide rod assembly is like a little piggy tail. So the piggy, piggy tail goes in the cave, all right? This lever out, up to the top like this. Top cover in place. A Little bit of gentle pressure from the rear until it lines up, pin goes in and forward and locks down in place. Now remember, this is still popped, and the way that I've got the rifle sitting on the front of the lug, I can perform a functions test without having to mess with anything. Safety off, bolt to the rear, squeeze the trigger, leave it held down, let go. You'll hear the reset, looks good. Safety on. Rifle will not fire. After that's been performed, safety back on. Magazine snaps in place. Make sure the bolt locks to the rear. It does. The rifle's fine. Good to go. You've got a perfectly good working SKS in nice shape. This is a, a very cool gun. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching today's video. That's how to break apart your SKS in relative detail and get her cleaned up. Uh, I know we didn't go over the specific cleaning processes, but I wanted to really spend a lot of time on disassembly and reassembly because there are a lot of little hacks that hopefully I was able to share with you uh, to keep your SKS running strong. They're great guns. They're robust. They're made well. They're reasonably inexpensive. They're fun to shoot. And uh, these, these are some of my favorite rifles. I love the SKS. Guys, uh, we really appreciate all the support. Um, you know, if you enjoyed watching today's video, consider maybe purchasing a shirt over at Forge from Freedom or maybe donating a buck or two on Patreon. All of those funds go to supporting the channel and helping us uh, create more of this content for you guys. Uh, we appreciate all of you who support us through programs like Man Cans and all the other things. So if you're one of those people, thank you very much. We make these videos for you guys. Let us know what you want to see. We will do more of them in time. Thanks for watching today. We're going to go out and shoot some. We'll see you later.